In 2011, the philosopher Charles Taylor wrote, Everyone can agree that one of the big differences between us and our ancestors of 500 years ago is that they lived in an enchanted world, and we do not. By this, Taylor meant that here in the 21st century, the inexorable march of science and technology has systematically dismantled our superstitions and wonder about the natural world. Even many people who call themselves religious today no longer see natural phenomena like weather patterns as acts of God. Our beliefs in fairies and magic all swept away, or at least diminished, by the Enlightenment and its philosophers. But has it really? Do we really live in a disenchanted age. In his new book, The Myth of Disenchantment, the scholar of religion Dr. Jason Josephson Storm sets out to debunk this idea. The single most familiar story in the history of science is the tale of disenchantment, of magic's exit from the henceforth law-governed world. I am here to tell you that as broad cultural history, this narrative is wrong. Josephson Storm argues that humanity never lost its belief in magic, but it was always there. The history of science, it seems, is a lot more complicated than we thought. But how can we say this? Haven't countless studies shown that religion is slowing in growth? That less and less people are believing in God and the supernatural? Well, in some respects, yes, maybe. Millennials in America are attending religious services less often. The percentage of people that don't believe in God has also risen. But other data suggests that this doesn't mean we as a species have become disenchanted. We still hold to a whole bunch of magic-ish beliefs. According to a 2005 study by Gallup, 73% of Americans believe in at least one paranormal activity, including ESP, ghosts, telepathy, astrology, channeling. Breaking this data down, a YouGov 2015 survey of Americans found that 48% believe in the existence of psychic abilities. 43% of them believe in ghosts. Moreover, astrology is booming among millennials, as well as the psychic service industry of aura reading, spirit channeling, and tarot card reading, growing at 2% between 2011 to 2016. And you might be thinking, well, that's America. It's famously religious, and a lot of the stuff that you just mentioned, like the belief in demons and angels, is just part and parcel to Christian theology, which is a very popular religion in the United States. Post-Christian Europe reveals different results. Results, right? Well, not really. Dr. Josephson Storm anticipated this argument, so he also studied data collected from the United Kingdom, which shows similar persistence in paranormal beliefs. A 2007 study found 42% believe in ghosts, 41% in telepathy, 32% in necromancy, less than half of the population, but still sizable chunks of society. This leads him to quip, in some, it would seem that despite being in some sense less godly, Britain seems to be no less haunted. So if humanity still holds to a whole bunch of magical beliefs and practices, where did this idea come from that we live in a disenchanted age? that the age of science has ended the age of magic. Well, in some respects, this comes from selective readings of early modern philosophers. Francis Bacon, Giordano Bruno, Isaac Newton, Rene Descartes. These guys are commonly thought to be the titans of the scientific revolution and the enlightenment, the ones that paved the way for 21st century science and technology. But, in many respects, these guys were not scientists in the modern sense. Giordano Bruno, lauded in Neil deGrasse Tyson's Cosmos series as an early adopter of the Copernican heliocentric theory, also extensively wrote about magic. Isaac Newton, master of calculus, champion of the law of gravity, and also the author of dozens and dozens of treatises on magic, Kabbalah, and alchemy. Rene Descartes was obsessed with magic and the occult, and believed in the power of visions to tell the future. Magic, science, religion. These three categories that we starkly separate today were mixed together in the minds of these figures. All of these scholars and more dabbled in the occult, spiritualism, mysticism, magic, a fact that many of us don't realize today. Why is that? Dr. Josephson Storm argues that it was the next generation that gave us the myth of disenchantment, a cadre of 19th century philosophers who selectively read earlier scholars as standing in a long stream of demythologizing humanity. 
This was the era of Hegel, Friedrich Jacobi, Friedrich Schiller, and most famously Nietzsche, and others like him who announced the death of God and the beginning of a mythless humanity. The philosopher Jacob Burkhardt, for example, argued that philosophy is essentially, as always, dedicated to the destruction of myth. And he looked back into history to see evidence of this, starting in ancient Greece all the way through the Renaissance, and charting instances of how philosophy and science systematically sucked the wonder and divinity out of nature, leading to a modern mythless society. Ironically, it was during this period that the idea of a European Renaissance was invented. The 19th century philosopher Michelet described an age of greater scientific discovery in France. Michelet himself saw the past as a narrative of continuing disenchantment. The old universal god of nature was no more. The gods of old had come to an end. At the close of the 19th century, Nietzsche then announced this mythless age. Now mythless man stands there. The enormous historical need of dissatisfied modern culture, the accumulation of countless other cultures, the consuming desire for knowledge, what does all this point to if not the loss of myth? The thing is, Nietzsche spoke too soon. He announced the new mythless humanity and the death of God in the midst of a huge revival in interest in the occult and spiritualism. In 1870 alone, over 100,000 spiritualist books were sold in the United States. And stretching into the 20th century, millions of people in the US and Britain joined spiritualist movements. Seances, theosophy, magic, all of these boosted in popularity in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And even the next generation of scholars, guys like Freud and Max Weber, were swept up in the hype. Despite arguing that religion was an illusion, Freud at times practiced being a spirit medium. He believed in the existence of clairvoyant dreams, and he convinced himself that telepathy existed after extensive personal experimentations. So at the very moment that we saw a move towards secularism, we saw a simultaneous counter-movement back towards magic and mysticism. So let's return again to Charles Taylor's quote. Everyone can agree that one of the big differences between us and our ancestors of 500 years ago is that they lived in an enchanted world and we do not. But in the 16th century, Francis Bacon was writing about magic. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton was experimenting with alchemy. In the 19th century, a huge resurgence of the occult occurred even while Nietzsche was declaring the death of God. And here we stand in the 21st century in the midst of a booming psychic industry and peak popularity in astrology. Humanity has never been disenchanted. Or at the very least, we're not as disenchanted as we might think we are. Yes, new cancer treatments are being discovered all the time, SpaceX is going to land us on Mars in the next 10 years, and some religious communities are declining, at least in the United States and in Western Europe. But enchanted beliefs and practices are persisting, and they're not going away anytime soon. I don't know what to make of that, but at the very least, I'm not going to bet against the psychic industry. As always, thanks for watching. So in case you didn't notice, this entire video was a synopsis of one book, Dr. Jason Josephson Storm's book, The Myth of Disenchantment. Uh, this was a free review copy that I requested because I'm super into magic and the history of science. Um, it's a provocative thesis. There's a lot in here that's going to make you think. Uh, so I'm going to put a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Um, also, special shout out to our patrons on Patreon for keeping this entire show afloat. If you'd like to support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash religionforbreakfast and donate just a dollar a month. That would be great. As always, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.